I'll be interested to know over the next minute or so, uh, put your comments on uh, whatever social platform you're on here, LinkedIn or, or Facebook or um, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube, because I want to see whether this is relevant to you and whether you think that uh, this could be of use to you. We're at Stars Open House. Now, this particular component here has been made on a sliding head lathe. Now, for those that, of you that know, um, know the types of videos that we do and know the, the colleagues involved in the business, you'll know that Geo standing next to me used to sell uh, work holding solutions. And um, I said to him earlier, I said, you'd go in most machine shops and see that this component would be being made on a machining center, wouldn't you? Absolutely. And you'd have to fixture it up, you'd have to sell them a vice uh, with soft jaws or however, but now this is made on a sliding head lathe. How much has things changed? Massively. I think that, you know, for prismatic parts such as this, and, and, and prismatic, let me just state firstly that larger prismatic parts than this can be made on, 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 on star sliding heads. Mm. Um, I think it's a game changer. So I was in the aerospace industry, Paul, where we made a lot of prismatic parts and we had to make them. This is only two op work, but certain components were five, six op, op, op work. You know, this is just profiling from, that's 2D work really, from one end then the other. But you think of a six-sided component um, which potentially could have took, taken six operations on a, on a VMC, transferring it from one op to another. And now effectively you could just bar feed them through out of round bar and mill them complete and they're coming off complete. It's a, it's a massive, it's, massive... It's not just a reduction in the amount of operations. I also looked at this in a bit more detail and thought to myself, and again, I'd be interested to know your thoughts on this, but the, the actual, the cutting strategy and the configuration of a sliding head lathe, all the tools are far closer together. So you can go from tool to tool far quicker than if you're on a machining center and you're having to tool change, come back out, which could take, even on a fast machine, you know, one and a half seconds. But well, here, you're, 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 there's no idle time. The, the savings are astronomical. So like you say, you, you, the actual uh, chip to chip time, the actual uh, time the part makes uh, takes to make complete is reduced significantly. But you think of also the savings of the setup time from where you're putting it onto one machine, then on another machine, then another machine. Every time you move that part, you've got to reset the part up. You've got to reset tooling up. You've got to reset datums. This is all manual time where the machine is down. But not only that, the tolerances, so from OP1 and OP2, the, the, the features and the relationship between the features from OP1 and OP2, or if you had six OP work, you know, Every time you move that component, you could be reducing the, the, the tolerances in regards to from one up to another and potentially start looking, you could scrap the parts. Let, let's conclude this by asking you, the viewer, how long you think one of these components takes to make on this sliding head lathe? Yeah, let, let, let's do that, let's, see, let's challenge them. We'll put the, uh, the results uh, maybe in say seven days time, but you've got seven days to guess what, how long you think it would take to machine this on this star sliding head lathe. 